Hello guys, today I will show you a small and easy um, aligner workflow uh, with CBT rules and etching guide at the end um, with Maestro 3D Auto Studio in the actual version 5.2 and um, we are talking about um, the setup of the tools and uh, how can we make the IPR and um, the attachments a little bit and uh, the settings, occlusion, jack, some things. Um, I will show you if you have some question, um, don't hesitate to ask me. Um, you can write me on uh, Facebook, I have um, the address on the app and also at the end of the video um, would be nice to hear from you and if you need some teaching or training just call me, we can make some terms and I uh, would be happy to hear from you and so we are starting, have some fun and enjoy. We are starting with the DB, with the database of Maestro Auto Studio and uh, you have many options to setting up the dentist, the practice and the patient. You can also change these settings um, if the cases are finished. It's a very new and cool option, so if you have made any mistakes, um, it's no problem. You have a searching uh, function and uh, you also have the possibilities to to filter it yes we are importing the stls or ovgs or ply um, also the roots the roots uh, are have to be imported as uh, extracted cbt files in an stl to uh, use some dicom data for the whole um, skull so it um, makes no sense we only need the roots for this case for this treatment if you want to export it just uh, have a look at your uh, cbt uh, software we're pressing next we can leave open the order management if you close um, the database will close and if you are going back you always have to start the database again and so if you are let the um, order management open it's always possible to get back to the order management for changing names or anything else just have to load the files takes a few seconds And for the first, we have to set up the occlusion. And this is possible with a three point area and uh, also with more than three points. This is normally six points. It's uh, possible to make it at this way, but probably would be better to make um, the points uh, one and uh, another and uh, then you can set new points between more work for you but i don't think it's a better result it's also possible to make this on the upper jaw it doesn't matter normally i think it uh, would be better to make this on the upper jaw yes of course and for the first time it looks very good you can hide also the occlusion plane and we are finished and pressing next this is the occlusion we have set it up but it's not totally right so we can adjust them manually and for this I always have a look at the uh, midline on uh, the Sagittal um, is in the mid of the Zix and this we have to change so we have 
if you have done this uh, then I'm messed up occlusion in the virtual articulation but it's no virtual articulator available at the moment yes don't be aware in the middle of the six sagittal and look at the transversal you can always on the left hide and show more of uh, the planes yes um, if you want to show something or see it better you can uh, turn it on uh, or turn it off also here the models you can hide it yes and then you only see on the plane cut the lines very very cool we are and going to next with the left mouse button so this is our articulated models and we have the possibility to change the articulation from the lower jaw to the upper jaw. You can set up if you want to change the upper jaw, use the upper jaw, but normally I would, exp um, uh, would say it's better to change the position of the lower jaw. And so you can view the planes and you can change the position of the jaw if you even look at the midlines so it's very easy with the turn on planes you can reset the position you can change the position by pressing the uh, plus and minus buttons or type in some numbers like you want or set it free with the mouse normally I think it's the best way to make this with um, type in the plus and minus buttons um, but normally it's a very fine tuning I would say and so it's better to make this with also fine steps This is possible. It's normally not needed for a simple aligner case because you don't change the whole occlusion. But I just want to show you how this is possible. You can turn off the planes and resetting the occlusion changes. can also make this with the ring the third option just reset if you want to have a look at uh, occlusion you can also set it on just turn it on the occlusion check and uh, you have various options to uh, make the areas bigger in case of the offset and so you will see it immediately here's the offset shown you can also change this information on the cursor but there's also a next step for the occlusion inspection this is the virtual model if you get some intra raw scans you have the possibility to make a model for study models and so um, you will get nice models for printing for 3d printing in the next version it would be also available 
for holo models at the end. If you make an FDM print, it's uh, not necessary, but if you will print it with a resin printer, it's always better to have a hollowed out model because you don't need so much of the uh, resin for this. It just tells the software what area you want to leave. And it's like a little bit of cutting the uh, scan data, yes. We have here the virtual base. And there are many options. The parallel, the ABO, the tweet, the ABO 2013, and you can make various bases. Normally I use the parallel, yes, with automatic options. You can make the height of the model, you can change some pointers. They are not okay. If you turn off symmetry, just for one jaw. Always press the left button if you want to move the points. By double clicking, you also can set up new points in. If symmetry off, you can uh, also make just one base in the height or you give in some values then if you want the models always the same height you can say just my models always 50 millimeters height and so you will get this this is the model We press next and you're finished. In the etiquette you have some options of naming the models, numbers and letters are possible, no pictures or anything else at the moment. can make it negative or positive. I prefer the negative uh, because it's for me to cut it out. Um, it's the better printing solution. Normally they come better out as uh, the positives. Just press next. and the software will calculate. So the next char, just make it visible and then press the etiquette button, type in what you want Always the plus, set it on the model, type in what you want to stand there, move it a little bit, then it is the right, you can make it a little bit bigger, you can rotate it. If the ring is blue in this case, then you can rotate it like you want. You can adjust the setup, the set off of the, of the imprint. I'm pressing next. 
so we'll finish. You can also set up more on etiquette on the model on each side like you want on the lower on the side on the back so and here is possible to remove the brackets if uh, you have a case with brackets on it but for this case we want uh, just some free forming of the models and this is the first one you have here the size of the pencil and the strongness just pressing the shift button and so you can adjust these values If there are some spots on the model, you have to, this is the last chance to, to, to remove this before you make the aligners. So if you're finished and um, you see some spots, I think it's always not the best solution to leave them. So just remove this, this this areas if you have an intra raw scan i think this is not the most of the the problems but if you come from analog scans and um, stone models then you will see this often from bad alginate Could be a little bit more powerful, I would say normally, but um, we don't freeform complete models. It's not necessary normally. Just little spots, sharp edges, such as things are needed, not the whole model. There you can give some input, would be also printed on the report. And here is the view section. If you have a big monitor, so you can present it very from each view. Yes, so well, changing the buttons and going to the analyze and Misha tool. And uh, the first of this is the occlusion analysis. And um, we have seen the models. So we have the offset from the models together. You can change the values by moving the slider and you will see the upgrowing numbers and values on the left side. And I think this is very, very cool. You have it always in the, in the view. You can turn this on also in the, in the tooth setup. Here you have the segmentation, you can uh, change by moving the slider, the plane, and you will see the cut view. You have more cut views, various planes. You can make it automatically run. And then we are going to the tooth segmentation and for the first we have to set up the wideness of the tooths. You have a fine adjustments possibility and always keep in mind um, if you make the first two points set up the numbers and if you make it from the first in this case from the from the one six you just have to uh, put the first time the number of the tooth in and if you're going ahead um, the next numbers already are the right ones. You have it here in the in the schemata also. You can zoom in and here you have easy option to 
the wideness of the tooth. By pressing the screen wheel you can move it on the left in the in the picture. And here you have the, the right dimension. So you don't have to rotate the models and it's uh, much the, the fastest solution for this. Just clicking through and if you begin on the right side you will have no problems with the setup. In this case on the first. Also if I do make an, an aligner segment uh, setup from free to free I normally always make it from six to six for the segmentation because if you stop at the don't don't uh, um, make that the force also with then uh, you will have a little bit problems in the movement of the teeth and the the, the four will be also with um, moved and so um, if you segmentation it it's not necessary to to make there are some changes yes in this case we have a missing tooth the 26 and um, normally this 26 would be the 27 yes because it's missing but you don't have to segmentate the missing tooth most of the time also i would rec recommend um, if the plan is just to move the upper jaw um, beware <coughs> and uh, also um, segmentate the lower jaw with it for the first time takes a little bit longer but if you have to do some changes also in the lower jaw at the end you don't have to make the segmentation again or the tooth set up and just can work it this is the segmentation line normally it fitting very good in this case this comes from the bad um, impression so the software has a little bit problems with it. If you're pressing the shift button, you can adjust also the, the wideness of the tooth. It's uh, needed for the segmentation line. And if you double click on the tooth, you will delete the, the, the points. And not on the tooth, on the line, on the points, yes. And you also can double click on the line and you will set up a new point. It's calculating and in the next step you can adjust um, the line, the thickness from the tooth to the gingiva. If you make this very sharp, you will get at the end sharp results. If you make it a little bit wider, it's smoother. Standard value would be uh, zero dot five you can change it also up to one millimeters this is this line just click on up on up accept and it will recalculate for the whole jar It's finished and press the next. Always click yes on saving and we have to adjust the, two, the uh, roots yes normally you can change it um, the moving of the roots uh, on the tooth or on the root center I would prefer the root center because any rotation would come along with the roots here you can give in the, the length of the root, if you have an OPG or anything else, you can rotate it also. This is possible. 
or you make one then another you have many options you can rotate it on the circle like shown if you rotate the model a little bit the circles will change and also uh, here in the up you can just push on the arrows you can change the root length of each tooth or reset moving on the roots it uh, would be very very necessary to know what you're doing there if this is bad done you will get bad results the best would be to have an opg then you can misha it or an cbt sounds easy with cbt but it isn't if you have a bad cbt and dicom data then you normally had not many chance to extract the roots and um, this would come out of the roots on not the best the most time and so it's not a bad thing to have an opg there you can measure the length of the roots and um, have a an, an, an look how how they are located i think it's not the baddest thing but always keep in mind there are no standard roots yes every everyone has an, an another tooth setup we have already done moving the roots you can adjust the length of the roots or reset on the circle or you're moving it by pressing on the circle so you can change it if you have some opg then like i said you can measure the length and uh, you will see how is the root to, uh, the to, the root located you can by pressing the arrows in the by pressing the arrow or you have adjust to all then the length and um, the rotation would be taken for all the roots but normally have a little eye on it also on the right if you press on the on the on the symbol you can have from the up only the tooth from the lower everything is possible Just double click on the next tooth. And we also see on the left up how the root is changing. So you can normally um, click very fast and comfortable through this process. If you just want to make a setup from three to three, normally I mark also the six, but it's not necessary to have a look on the roots of the six, but uh, the fault and the five as always uh, will make the root setup with. And most of the times four and five is also a little bit moving within. And so it's uh, the, the best to, to set up also this there is option normally it's not uh, the best to to rotate the model all the time um, i think it's better to make this uh, from this buttons just the next and um, don't move the model the most of the time just 
just click on the symbols very comfortable and fast and like I told you if you don't know where the roots are it's uh, very heavy to say where ha the tooths have to move and the results would be much more better if you know where the roots are OPG is more than enough you can get uh, CBT is the be is very cool yes but it's not an easy option to to get the uh, roots out of it you can import it from CBT data and this is extracted you can use some software like uh, Invisalius or make it out of the CBT data software. But if you see, it's always a little bit tricky b between bone and uh, the root data because it's not so clear. And if the, if the roots are a little bit uh, not the best, I would say, then uh, you won't get the best results on it. It's a um, multiple point matching, yes. The software automatically position it just put on the points on the tooths and you can remove it and in the fine adjusting you will get the adjusted roots to the tooths the software is calculating and then you have the optimized and like a scene on the six there is nothing And if there are some tools with um, roots filling, it's also a little bit tricky. And loading the CBT data, you always have to check it again. And you see on the on the on the root this point, and it would, this is your setup for the for the software. Normally, it makes very very sense to have the lines adjusted to this area, so the software will make the right movements at the end. Yes, like you see, just short before the point and everything is okay. Yes, if you in the drop down see the rotation center would be the root, then this line go up to this point, and this is what we want. Just set it up for all, and you will have it on all twos. It's very fast if you're importing the, uh, the CBT data, yes, but if the data isn't perfect it makes it doesn't make it easier i would say so we have to measure the jaw just press on the last tooth and this is from buckle side and then you have the length of the tooth completely also on the lower jaw this is just for information. You have here the option to measure some things. Normally I would make from the 4 to the 4th, from the 6 to the 6th. 
in this case it's 67 yes it's a little bit problematic we don't know the sec six on the second and then uh, from this toy five to messy or three on both sides these are the standard values just for me to have the information where I have to move. This is nothing new, we are using in auto um, Düsseldorfer values, it's called in Germany. We are finished. Here you have also the possibility to um, load an old model and so you can have an, a view on what's happened and uh, where we have to go. The virtual setup in the next step and this is the thing as we are interested in. Yes, now we are ready to rumble I would say and it's possible to make uh, various setups for uh, various uh, plans I would say yes and on the left you have the whole possibilities you can show the planes the models here are the the virtual setup one yes you can make a virtual setup two three how much you want to show the patient some results is it so is it so and the patient can tell you no, I want this or that. Also, the shiny of the models, if it's too much, you can turn it here on and off. And various views. This is just for the, for the optic. And this here is the possibilities to make an, a new setup, and it's always based on the first model. Also for the lower jaw, upper jaw, lower jaw. Here you have the tooths. You can immediately access to the tooth you want or just double click it. You can mark some tooths together. If you are going here, you can make the completely side turn on and off or the complete front and move it where you want. You can move it, rotate it, the complete front or mark just tooth together. Yes, you can see a little bit in front to completely and then we are moving one teeth then the another. It's possible in the in the few are taken to move the tooth and this is rotating with shift and control or Like here, torque it. And on the left, you also have the possibilities with the plus and minus buttons to make an, an fine adjustment. Normally, it makes sense to um, take the tools to the place you want and make the fine adjustment with the plus and minus buttons. Um, I think it's normally the fastest one, yes. Also beware, uh, don't to move the tools alone. It's always in rotating. And that, that's why it is so necessary to know where the roots are. Here you can turn off the occlusion analysis 
doesn't make sense to have this because if you move the tooth and it's on the software will calculate the new position and if you like see here this um, these lines are telling you the tooths are going into each other and so there is necessary um, some IPR yes or you have a, a misocclusionment like you see on the fourth in this case if you turn it off you can move it faster normally it makes sense to make this setup and then have a, a look at the at the occlusion and the bite and make the fine adjustment also. Station, talk. Double click with activate the tooth, also you can in the drop down on the left side, this is also possible. With shift, pressing shift in the left mouse button you will move it, with control in the left you will rotate it and um, control in the left mouse button always have uh, um, on the view you have if you will see it from the side you don't want to rotate it then the rotation is in another another thing like it is from the occlusion area if you have a look from the side it's more a um, tip thing The shift is always the same. You can move the tooth. Like I told, I normally right. use the possibility the to place the tooth is fast or make the fine adjustment with the plus and minus. And at the end, if my setup would be done, I have a look at the occlusion and for the IPR, if it's necessary or not. Normally I would position the tooth together and then I have a look from the front and make the right adjustments. Doesn't make sense to make each tooth one one tooth and another than uh, perfect. This, this this doesn't work. Just make the whole the, the bow and then have a fr uh, have a look at the front and then make the fine adjustment. So what is really necessary is if you uh, to have the the numbering of the of the jaw and this is an auto numbering you just have to place the first one and the software makes uh, for the model creation at the end the rest yes if you have here and look and the IPR it's possible on the On the software can tell you how much it is needed. In this case, you can uh, give it directly in. You will see there's an IPR of 0 0.12 necessary to get success, and here is the same on to, uh, between 2.2 and 2.3. And I will show you in the next step how it works, definitely. Can turn it up. You can also minimize that everywhere. Software calculate sometimes if it's turned on and will tell you 
there it, it isn't needed or just 0 0.05 but uh, beware all this annulating takes a little bit time yes between this two can or on the second possibility I will show you yes this is the one IPR between and the software just calculated a little bit it's more an, an, an optical thing to see the the IPR tool normally i would say it isn't necessary and um, i also will show you a faster way like this one so you have to decide how much will i need and the most of the question is how thick has it to be and uh, for the first time you won't see it but if you see here now you have given in an, an, an zero dot fifteen, and normally it isn't necessary at all because the software tells you zero dot zero eight on both sides or one side, and uh, this is for the, the second thing, an option. I will show you if you have the tooth, and if you press on the IPR, this schemata, then you have the possibility to give in the values. On the lower just double click and don't make a zero just make 0 0.01 and you have the IPR automatically here in this thickness you will need you can tell the software on both side or just on one side and this is uh, for me the fastest way to have the, the, the IPR done quick and easy and perfectly so because if the dentist doesn't make the IPR um, you will not succeed at the end the place between the tooths is the key to, su to success if there is no place the tooths can can't re uh, rotate and so you won't you won't get the, the tooths on the end position of your plan You also can delete it if you just want to click on the trash button you will have seen and so the IPR is perfectly done in a short and easy way yes the other thing is, is you will see the the saw and yes but do we need really this I don't think so I think it's enough to give in the numbers and have the space and just make the setup good and this is the better way I would say and the next Thing would be the attachments Here you can
In this shimata you will see the complete movement of the tooths of each tooth and so we are going to the attachments just take one attachment press the plus make a double click on the tooth you want to place and so you can load some parameters And you can make it on the arrows bigger, wider. Thicker would be impossible on the left side with the plus and minus on the thickness. You can make a torque and rotation. You can copy it. And you can set it to the axis automatically. You can copy it, right mouse click, insert, orientation, you can have a look if it's good. can take another one this is uh, also often a question um, what attachment would you use for hmm, nobody today nobody can give me an answer on this um, if there is a course for it I would make it uh, immediately um, because this is the, the, the biggest question of all the thing would be use this attachments you have made good um, a good result with it Yes, and how it always belongs. How much is the rotation? How how uh, you need? It could be possible. Also, you need not only one attachment. Also, to be needed to take two. Also, on the lingual or palatinal side, um, and not always on the buccal side. Also, on the like, like it is because you have to have a look. It could be possible. That you have to make an, an recasing also with the attachments for the model creation here we would see now this is necessary for the steps to get the the uh, jaw models for the uh, aligner production and um, we have the possibilities to get values i have the values in the maestro 3d auto experts group on facebook's and you have um, here the standard values would be used for the um, adults and um, some values for the um, after auto, after bracket um, alignment. And if you want more models, you can set up. And if you, like you have seen, if there are values um, green, you have to make the values higher. And after you have done this, because the software will tell you this is not possible with your standard values, you have uh, chosen. And then you can uh, decide to uh, make a higher movement on the tools and. Um, if you want to do this, it's possible to um, go this way with lower if you have made the models, then you will see the movement of the tooth. In the next step. We and have in the, the next possibilities step. to make the jaw models for the aligner force and there are two options the first is we draw on curve where we want the model to end This is the one option. The second option is to do this um, with a plane, but not always is the plane good enough. If you have draw the line, the curve, um, be aware that blue arrow is on the tooth. If it's not on a tooth, then you can't press next and it's working and makes 
and plain cut it model for 3D printing. No problem, the roots are at the end not out of the model. In this case we have six models and the transfer model for the attachments. If your doctor asks you for uh, an etching guide um, so he don't have to etch the whole tooth, you can uh, print him an, a small etching guide, like a splint, but with holes in it. And uh, the holes are there where the attachments are have to be at the end. And so we just make a small guide. can set up the thickness, in this case one millimeter. The offset from the model would be the, the offset the surface, offset from the surface and also from the um, attachments and the, the um, milling radius correction. But we are 3D printing so you can set it up to null, to zero. So always bear that the, that the blue arrow is on the uh, in the in the etching guide in this case. So the software doesn't uh, work if it's not in the area of the guide and so you have latching guide you can print it with IBT materials there are various from DTEX from um, Keystone from Aziga This is the second option you can do if you say now it's uh, um, it's too high you can now cut it easily. If the jaw is complete I think this isn't the best solution, it doesn't work um, the whole time. But if it's plain cutted and you say oh, the models are too high then you can make it a little lower. At the last we would get the report. You can adjust the report like you want. You can put in what you want. You can make the colors of it. You can have a, your logo on it. You can name it like you want. You can zip it. You can close it with, uh, with, an, with a password. Um, just set up your export and the software will tell you it's ready exported. You can make a little a short film Yes, you can change the logo, the colors, the animation, how long would it uh, would be the duration of the animation, what format would it be, just for, for, for the setup of the name of the, of the film. So it isn't necessary to have an, 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 an HD quality for just looking at a smartphone from the dentist or just uh, for sending to the patient. You can um, both jaws or just one jaw. And if you press the record button, the software will create the video. This is like it's in uh, filmed. You can also tell the software don't to use the study models at the beginning. Um, no animation anywhere, so it would be a little bit shorter, but um, the shorter it is, uh, the less information you would give to the dentist or the patient. So keep in mind, just to lower the duration in seconds, yes. I think three seconds is the shortest one, and for me, I think it's enough uh, to show patients what's happened with the tooths. It's a nice giveaway for the patient. We set up the motivation and they can show it to the family. If you have uh, 
face scan also it would be shown here very cool but at the moment I using Android and uh, Bellows app is only working on iOS so um, it's the other things are too expensive for me at the moment so I won't use face scans Software ask you for the export folder. I probably would export it in the patient folder, in the auto model export folder from Maestro. And at least we have to export the etching guide. You can always uh, also make an, an clear liner. Yes, then you don't have to export uh, the the whole model setup, but um, at the moment I don't think uh, there's a material for it. There would come something from Keystone, Keysplint Art, and uh, Graphy also have something cool, but first we have to try uh, if it works. If they export for the models, you can tell the software to export um, the data type uh, STL, OBG or PLY and um, you also can tell the software to zip the whole model set to one zip. If you want to send it to the lab, you are the dentist sending to the lab, they are printing for you. It's a little bit easier, you don't have to zip it extra, the software will do this for you. And um, so you can decide what format, um, PLY, OBG, something what, what the lab needs normally for 3D printing the lab uh, just needs um, STL for printing. The most of the printers can't read an PLY or an OBG file. It's very nice uh, to see um, how you can change the fuse. And for the rest we are finished. So like you see it's not so hard to make an aligner setup for some uh, aligner treatment and um, if you have some question just call me on Facebook or write me on the messenger I will get back to you or if you have questions in the Maestro 3D Facebook group just write your comments or um, your questions we can discuss it and um, I would be happy to hear from you and see you bye bye